will not bury the rule of law in the United States of America, and I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. The chair recognizes the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Gowdy, for five minutes. Thank you, Judge Poe. Uh, there are a lot of issues that I would like to ask you about, Mr. Uh, Deputy Attorney General. We had a terrorist incident in New York uh, this week. We have 702 reauthorization that is pending in Congress. Uh, gun violence, the opioid epidemic, criminal justice reform. Um, but when I go home to South Carolina this weekend, trust me when I tell you, no one is going to ask me about any of those issues. They're going to ask me, what in the hell is going on with the Department of Justice and the FBI? The reason we have special counsel, this is a very important point, the re and you know it, the reason we have special counsel is because of a conflict of interest. The regulation itself specifically makes reference to a conflict of interest. And, and we don't like conflicts of interest because it undercuts people's confidence in both the process and the result. So, so let's be really clear why we have special counsel. There was either a real or perceived conflict of interest that we were fearful would either impact the result or people's confidence in the process. That's why we have something called special counsel, and that's why we have special counsel in this fact pattern. And then lo and behold, uh, those who are supposed to make sure there um, are no conflicts of interest seem to have a few of their own. Uh, there's a senior prosecutor who sent obsequious emails to a fact witness. I, she can be described as nothing other than a fact witness. She's a really important fact witness if you pursue the line of inquiry that my Democrat friends want to pursue. They got off of collusion and now they're on obstruction of justice. She may be the most important fact witness in an obstruction of justice case. And the senior prosecutor for this conflict of interest free special counsel sent a fawning, obsequious email to a fact witness. And then we have prosecutors assigned to conduct this investigation who donated almost exclusively to one candidate over another. And then we have a prosecutor assigned to this conflict of interest free team that attended what was supposed to be, what he'd hoped to be, a victory party for Secretary Clinton. And we have a senior DOJ official, Mr. Deputy Attorney General, with an office that used to be two doors down from yours, meeting with Fusion GPS. And Fusion GPS, of course, was paying for Russian dirt on the very person that they're supposed to be objectively investigating. And then that same senior DOJ official's wife the one that met with Fusion GPS, his wife was on the payroll of Fusion GPS. And then we have a senior agent assigned to investigate Secretary Clinton's email, help draft the exoneration letter where we change the language from grossly negligent to extremely careless, interviewed Secretary Clinton in an interview I've never seen, and I doubt you have either in your career as a prosecutor, interviewed Michael Flynn, was actively involved in the investigation into the Trump campaign before the inspector general found his text. So this agent in the middle of almost everything related to Secretary Clinton and President Trump sent pro-Clinton texts, anti-Trump texts to his paramour in response to being told maybe he is where he is to protect the country from that menace, Donald Trump. He said, I can protect our country at many levels. And then he said Hillary Clinton should win 100 million to nothing. Now, think about that, Mr. Deputy Attorney General. That's a coming victory, 100 million to zero. And, and when I read that last night, what I thought was this conflict of interest free Senior agent of the FBI can't think of a single solitary American who would vote for Donald Trump. That's where the zero comes in. Not a single solitary American he can imagine would vote for Donald Trump. This is the conflict of interest free special agent assigned. And then he went on, if that weren't enough, to belittle Trump supporters by saying he could smell them at a Walmart in Virginia. This is the person we needed to avoid a conflict of interest. And then he said this, they fully deserve to go and demonstrate the absolute bigoted nonsense of Trump. But he wasn't content to just disparage Donald Trump. He had to disparage 
Donald Trump's family. This is what he said, Mr. Deputy Attorney General. He said, the douchebags are about to come out. He's talking about our first lady and children, this conflict of interest-free special agent of the FBI. This is who we were told we needed to have an objective, impartial, fair, conflict of interest free investigation. So he's openly pulling for the candidate he had a role in clearing, and he's openly investigating a candidate that he has bias against. And then if that's not enough, he says, Trump is an effing idiot. What the F just happened to our country? This is the same man that said he would save our country. What happens when people who are supposed to cure the conflict of interest have even greater conflicts of interest than those they replace? Well, I, that, that, that's not a rhetorical question. It, you nor I nor anyone else would ever sit Peter Strzok on a jury. We wouldn't have him objectively, dispassionately investigate anything knowing what we know now. Why didn't we know it ahead of time? And, and, and my last Question, my final question to you, and I appreciate the chairman's patience. How would you help me answer that question when I go back to South Carolina this weekend? Congressman, uh, first of all, with regard to the special counsel, uh, Mr. Strzok was already working on the investigation when the special counsel was appointed. The appointment that I made was of Robert Mueller. So what I'd recommend that you tell your constituents is that uh, Robert Mueller and Rod Rosenstein and Chris Ray are accountable and that we will ensure that no bias is reflected in any of the actions taken by the special counsel or in any matter uh, within the jurisdiction of the Department of Justice. When we have evidence of any inappropriate conduct, we're going to take action on it. Uh, and that's what Mr. Mueller did here. As soon as he learned about this issue, he took action. Uh, and that's what I anticipate that uh, the rest of our prosecutors, our new group of U.S. attorneys, our Justice Department appointees, uh, they understand the rules, and they understand the responsibility to defend the integrity of the department. And if they find evidence of improper conduct, they're going to take action. So, Congressman, that's the best assurance I can give you. Uh, but actually, there's one other point, which is uh, you should tell your constituents uh, that we exposed this issue because we're ensuring that the inspector general conducts a thorough and effective investigation. And if there is any evidence of impropriety, he's going to surface it and report about it publicly. I'll try. I'm the gentleman has expired. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Rhode Island, Mr. Cicilline, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rosenstein. Uh, in February, the Department of Justice changed its litigation position in VZ versus Abbott, the Texas photo ID case. Did you have any involvement in this decision to reverse the Justice Department's longstanding position in this case that the Texas voter ID law was intentionally discriminatory? No, I did not. In August, the Department of Justice changed its litigation position in the case Husted versus H. Philip Randolph Institute. The Justice Department is now defending Ohio's voter purging law. Were you involved in the decision to change this litigation position and now side with the voter purging law? I was at the department at that time, but I, I don't believe I had any involvement in the decision. And were you involved in the Justice Department's decision to file an amicus brief in Masterpiece Cake Shop versus Colorado Civil Rights Commission on behalf of the baker who seeks to deny baking wedding cakes to same-sex couples? Well, that decision was made by our inspector general. Uh, pardon me, our solicitor general. Solicitor general. Uh, you described uh, the special counsel as a heroic figure who served his country, a career prosecutor, uh, someone who was confirmed unanimously as the FBI director, uh, someone of extraordinary reputation, service, and patriotism. I take it uh, your judgment on Mr. Mueller has not changed today. Correct. And you would not have appointed a special counsel or appointed Mr. Mueller if you thought he was going to engage in a witch hunt, correct? Correct. And so it's... you. Uh, you then would disagree with the president's labeling of the special counsel as a witch hunt, I assume. I don't know exactly what the president meant by that, Congressman. The special counsel's investigation is not a witch hunt. Well, it's not a witch hunt. The president said it is. You disagree. I mean, you're supposed to be independent. You, you, you can answer a question contrasting the president. You disagree it's a witch hunt. The president's wrong, correct? I do not know what the president meant by that, Congressman. Okay. I can only answer for myself. Do you believe that the repeated attacks on the credibility of Special Counsel Mueller, whether by conservative pundits on TV or by my colleagues here in Congress, threatens to undermine the credibility of the independent investigation? The independence and integrity of the investigation is not going to be affected by anything that anybody says. You delivered remarks on October 25th before the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and I quote, you said, if we permit the rule of law to erode when it does not directly harm our personal interests, the erosion may eventually consume us as well. The rule of law is not self-executing. If it collapses, 
If the people lose faith in the rule of law, then everyone will suffer, end quote. In the context of the president's uh, attacks, this is, the American people are really witnessing an unprecedented attack on our democratic institutions by this president. Uh, first, diminishing the seriousness of the investigation which is underway about Vladimir Putin's interference on our elections, attacks on the judiciary, attacks on the free press. Uh, the one institution which continues to enjoy broad public support and remains key to protecting the rule of law is the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Department of Justice. America is counting on your integrity and your commitment to protecting the independence of the special counsel to reaffirm our commitment to the rule of law. And so when you said just a moment ago that you don't have an opinion about a loyalty oath from the president being asked of people, it might be useful to remind you, sir, that members of the Department of Justice take an oath to the Constitution. And so a loyalty oath to the president of the United States is inappropriate for any president to ask for it and for anyone to swear it. Do you agree? Congressman, nobody has asked me for a loyalty oath. That's not my question, sir. My question is, you are here to, to demonstrate the independence of your office, and you are unwilling to say that an oath to the President of the United States rather than to the Constitution is not inappropriate. That does not inspire no, a lot of confidence. To say that. An oath to the President of the United States uh, rather than the Constitution would be inappropriate. Or, an oath to the President of the United States, period, is not appropriate. Congressman, you're talking about a hypothetical okay. where it's not clear what, what was asked or you, what was said. Uh, you, you also as long said, as you are following your oath of office, you can also be faithful to the administration. No, that's not faithful is not the question. I'll move to a new question. You also said you would not respond to the question uh, to say whether or not uh, the president of the United States had uh, asked you to initiate criminal prosecutions against political adversaries. That you would not disclose whether or not those conversations took place. I said I would disclose if any if I was told to do something improper. Well, if, what about if you were encouraged to do something improper? What if you were encouraged to initiate a criminal investigation? That's not appropriate to do, is it? Several of your colleagues on both sides have encouraged me today, Congressman. And uh, as I've explained, I'm going to base my decisions on the facts and the law. I understand that, Mr. Rizzi, but the, the, the action of a president to encourage you to initiate a criminal prosecution, separate apart what you will do with that, that very action is not appropriate. You're free to make that judgment. Well, I'm asking you in your judgment. Isn't that inappropriate? My judgment is it would be inex in inappropriate for somebody to order me to do something. But it wouldn't be inappropriate for, for your supervisor, the person you serve, the president of the United States, to tell you or suggest you or encourage you to initiate a criminal prosecution against a political adversary? <laughs> Congressman, I think I've been very clear about this, that nobody is giving uh, I'll me just end with this direct. Orders. I'll just end with this, Mr. Deputy Attorney General. You know, we, you know, we've heard you very proudly here talk about the integrity of the Department of Justice and the work of the FBI. We heard Director Ray say the same thing. These two agencies, the FBI and the Department of Justice, are in the midst of an unprecedented attack by individuals who are trying to undermine the credibility of this independent counsel's investigation. These are the same group of individuals who praised Robert Mueller when he was appointed. Spectacular. It was... Was, was praised uniformly. And now the only thing that's changed is two indictments, two pleas. Michael Flynn, part of the president's inner circle now, cooperating with the government. That's the only thing that's changed. We need to hear your voice defending the integrity of this department, rule of law, the independence of this investigation, because the very future of our democracy is at stake if you fail to do that. And so I urge you.